They gave me a birthday cake. Birthday. <laughs> hey! No girlfriends! Inside the mountain, and then come up. Uh, it's literally a tunnel through the mountain. There's one mountain on the south uh, and the north. So I'm in Sunny Banff. Uh, I just got here on the Flix bus and I'm going to hike back to Canmore over the next 24 hours and then get a bus home back to Calgary and then fly back to Australia. So I thought I'd take you along for a brief uh, adventure in Banff. I didn't get here on the, the GDT. We didn't actually come into Banff town, but we hiked all the mountains around here. So uh, I'm going to do a goat track. It's like a 30 kilometer ish hike from here to Canmore and then go home. Okay, it's crossing the Bow River Bridge. The pedestrian bridge was just on the left and uh, it's like something pretty cool and historic up here. But uh, I'm gonna keep hiking. So there's a very nice art in nature sort of exhibition that's going along next to this, uh, the Bow River, which is just through there. But there's uh, it's a lovely little gravel bike path with a whole bunch of kind of random pieces of art <laughs> tacked to trees and things. Some are better than others. Uh, I've got to walk along this for about four or five kilometers, uh, then sort of diverge off to the right to get over to my, I think it's Goat Creek track that takes me eventually to Canmore. Just a little bit more art <laughs> before we go. So this seems to be Bow River Falls and uh, the river just continues on. So now I seem to be following uh, Goat Creek a bit more closely, which is good. It's much prettier. Okay, so I've turned away from the river for about a 5k sort of uh, loop around to cross the creek and clouds have definitely started to roll in. So I'm starting to think about places to camp. I've been going for about three hours now. Actually two hours, sorry. And or maybe maybe two and a half, but I've covered a lot of ground because uh, it's just an easy fire road. So um, I'm pretty much halfway to Canmore already. In theory, I could just keep walking into Canmore, but then I'd have to get a campsite somewhere in there. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll keep walking, but it's sort of got a bit windy and then it got a bit still, so <laughs> I reckon I've got maybe 45 minutes before it starts raining. Okay, I've just come up to a sign and I've still got 19 kilometers into Canmore, so I'm gonna keep walking. Uh, that's the weather behind me and sorry about the quick pan that's the weather in front of me it actually looks a lot better so i'm hoping that towards canmore which did have a slightly better forecast maybe i'll get lucky tonight and uh, not get rain until one or two in the morning which they were both predicting about two mil in that hour so i don't think i'm going to get away with no rain but it'd be nice if i didn't have it all night this is quite cute, just crossing the creek again. A little waterfall down here. I am umming and ahhing, but I guess I'm going to keep going. I'd like to go till about 8, and the weather does seem to be just holding, so... Uh, I, mean, I could probably go in that grass patch over there, but I don't want to be visible from the road. Anyway, I'll keep going. So, well, it's 8 p.m. and I am one and a half kilometers from, from Canmore. So uh, it turns out that the threat of imminent thunderstorm behind you is a pretty good motivator to walk fast. So I'm still looking for a site. I saw a really good spot about 5Ks back, but it was uh, really close to the road. And uh, tomorrow's Saturday, I figured a lot of people are gonna be riding this road or walking it, probably riding it and it was a bit of a viewpoint, so um, I'm still looking for a spot, but I am uh, back that way. Canmore is only, the outskirts of Canmore anyway, uh, one and a half kilometers, so um, it's been a good hike. It's been power walking the whole time on chocolate. I didn't even bring my stove this hike, so uh, I wasn't ever gonna eat a meal, but yeah, anyways, I'll see how I go. If I do pitch, I'll show you from there. Okay, 
I'm one kilometer from the road out uh, and I found a little spot on a little grassy knoll and the road is actually, you can see it, it's just there. So uh, I think once my tent's pitched, it's going to be okay. <laughs> There's a nice patch of moss here uh, and I kind of can hear rolling thunder in the background. So I'm going to pitch and then change my bus tomorrow and, um, and leave Canmore at about 12 instead of 5 p.m. Um, yeah, I'm just going to walk out through the, anywhere I can get Wi-Fi, try and do the bus then and yeah, I'll be out by, you know, 8.30 in the morning, so. Okay, I've just had to show you this because it's pretty ridiculous. I haven't been able to use any pegs. So I've done things like I've run this guy line over here underneath and then hooked it and just braced this log across. So I've done that with basically all of these corners. <laughs> I've moved some logs around encircling the, the log and then hooking on underneath because I find that's pretty strong and then on the other side so this one's just to a branch that's uh that's still alive and this one I've put a couple of a couple of stakes in to hold this log in place and dug that end into the moss it's wrapping around here again uh, pretty similar with this thing I braced it against a tree dug it into the ground and then wrapped it around that. So <laughs> this is a no peg pitch for a non freestanding tent. So Ian should be very proud. <laughs> I even dragged over this log so I could extend my interior space out. And also Ian will be happy. I have a uh, PCT hang in the tree there. <laughs> Not even a PCT, it's just going straight to uh, to a line down near the back of my tent so I don't forget it. Okay, hopefully you can see me okay. Um, this is the weirdest setup ever because it feels like... I put the mattress down anyway, but um, I don't think I needed to. It's so mossy, like deep moss, that I feel like I've set up on a bouncy castle. Um, it's like putting an air mattress on top of another air mattress. So um, I think I'm going to sleep really well. Assuming the tent stays up and it doesn't rain too hard, uh, the moss should absorb all of the rain that falls off the tent. So, uh, and I'm only one and a half kilometers from town, basically. So, um, yeah, I'll just pack up in the morning, and even if stuff's wet, and go and get some breakfast, and then try and get an earlier bus. Uh, maybe have a look around Canmore a bit. Anyway, it's a it's a very cool setup tonight. <laughs> Okay, it's raining a lot now. Uh, it didn't start till about 10. It's supposed to be at its worst between 1 and 3 a.m. So, uh, see, what, see what happens. This is my trail this morning. It's a very pretty view. You can see the clouds over here. It's, uh, it rained a lot last night. Everything's very wet, but that's all right because I'm going into town today. Uh, and I'm just on this... Uh, kind of bike path slash fire road it's pretty narrow so it's mostly only bikes now but it's quite nice it's uh, only about 12 degrees I think so I'm wearing a bit of clothing <laughs> uh, otherwise uh, I've only got about a kilometer so I'll chat to you from town well that looks like the end of my hike and try and hitch back to Camel. another road walk for me so uh, it's a very pretty valley but I'm headed uh, that away into Canmore. <laughs> Fortunately I am going against the traffic, it's only about 8 in the morning. Everyone's heading here to do stuff at the trailheads rather than going back home. So I don't think I'm going to have much luck. I just got a lift from a lovely um, kind of family and they lived in uh, Calgary. They offered me a lift back to Calgary later today but um, I've got a bus from here. So uh, I'm just going to kill three hours and then get my bus. <laughs> 